You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. California pig rules could cause bacon to disappear. Why are we reading about this on a real estate podcast? Simply put, who doesn't like bacon? If you don't like bacon, well, that's your call. Most people like bacon. You know why? Because it's got a lot of fat in it and fat tastes really good. Mmm, bacon. I like bacon that's cold and crunchy like the next day. Take it out of a Ziploc bag and have it for a little snack. Have it for your little fatty snack. It's so good. Bacon and eggs, also another excellent option. Maybe some bacon bits in your salad. You're going to go the healthy route. You want to have just a little bit of fat, sprinkle the bacon bits over the top oh, and have them be actual bacon bits. Doesn't that just sound good? It does. What's going on with California where they're going to basically maybe make bacon disappear? This is what we need to find out. All right, before we jump on in, if you're new here, my name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies. And I read news stories about bacon. That's what we're doing today. All right, let's get into it. Thank you to those of you who sent me this story, because it's a funny story. It's not funny from the standpoint that this is actually happening. This is actually happening. Where you might constrict the supply of bacon, your BLT at your local diner might go through the roof because it's getting hard to find that bacon. Where can I get some bacon? Can I get any black market bacon? Can I get a whole side of a pig so I can do my own bacon? Is that even a thing? I know they make bacon out of pigs. All right. So the new rules go into effect next year that require more space for pigs and other animals. Okay. Thanks to a reworked menu and long hours, Jeannie Kim, who managed to keep her San Francisco restaurant alive during the coronavirus pandemic, she figured it out. She adapted. She made it go. That makes it all the more frustrating that she fears her breakfast-focused diner could be ruined within months by new rules that could make one of her top menu items, bacon, hard to get in California. All right, you see where I'm going with this. It's, yeah, you know, we want to, we want to, if it bleeds, it leads. And man, people love their bacon. They're going to be pissed when they think they're not going to be able to get any. It's just like when, uh, was it, Hostess said, oh, we're, we're going bankrupt. No more Twinkies. Oh, no more Twinkies or cupcakes. Well, somebody bought their assets and you can still get Twinkies, which are about as nutritional as, I mean, bacon's got a little bit of uh, protein in it, right? It's got some fat. Uh, Twinkies, hmm. It's got some preservatives. You can have that Twinkie last on the shelf forever. I do like a good Twinkie though. The Hostess ones. Those are harder to get now. Twinkies and bacon. That's what we're podcasting on today. Our number one seller is bacon, eggs, and hash browns, said Kim, who for 15 years has run Sam's American Eatery. Sam's American Eatery, that is down-home America. I'm surprised that hasn't been outlawed. You know what I mean? Sam's American Eatery on the city's busy Market Street. It could be devastating for us. When I first read this, I was like, yeah, right. But when you think about it, if one of your three main dishes, oh, so you wanted the bacon, eggs, and hash browns? Well, how about just eggs and hash browns? Are, are you okay with that? Are you Are you down with that? Just... Just eggs and hash browns. I mean, it'll be delicious. I mean, we'll throw in some kind of other meat product, said meat product, but bacon, no longer a go here. Cost prohibitive. Can't get it. Just can't get it. At the beginning of next year, California will begin enforcing an animal welfare proposition approved overwhelmingly by voters in 2018 that requires more space for breeding pigs, egg-laying chickens, and veal calves. National veal and... Okay, here's the thing. I I know we're growing these, these animals for food sources, all right? And let's keep it as humane as possible. But do we need to make all of these animals like free range? That's, that's, that's what I... That's where I... I 
I start to lose where we're kind of coming from and going to here. National veal and egg producers are optimistic that they can meet the new standards, but only 4% of hog operations now comply with the new rules. 4%, that means 96 out of 100 hog producers, they're not meeting the new standards. Meat from those 96 out of 100 hog producers, that's not going to cut it in California. That's a no go. Sam's American Eatery, not going to be able to serve bacon along with their bacon, eggs and hash brown specials from those producers. It's a no go. It's not can't do it. Unless the courts intervene or the state temporarily allows non compliant meat to be sold in the state. Do we have a case of non compliant meat here? I'm going to need to check the certification of your meat supplies. Is this coming from one of those 96 out of 100 pork producers that's not compliant? You're going to have inspectors go out there? You bet you are in California. So unless the courts intervene or the state temporarily allows non-compliant meat to be sold in the state, California will lose almost all of its pork supply, much of which comes from Iowa. And pork producers will face higher costs to regain a key market. All right, this is one of those things where I think people think, oh, our, our pigs and our egg-laying chickens and our veal calves, they think of them as pets or something instead of food sources. All right, I don't want inhumane conditions either, but how much extra space do we need to have to make these food supplies more comfortable? I don't know, but this does seem a little far-fetched. Can't we just literally, so not many pork, you can see where I'm getting kind of hung up and confused here. It's like, this is really a thing. Apparently it is. Again, I don't eat a ton of bacon, but I do enjoy it. Do I want to deny others their rightfully said bacon at Sam's American Eatery? No, I, I don't. So I, hopefully there's some kind of work around here. What if we went with turkey bacon? How would that be? Just turkey bacon. A lot of turkey bacon. Have you had turkey bacon? Not the most delicious of bacons. It's more like beef jerky than it is bacon, isn't it? Hey, you want to have some really healthy turkey bacon? I mean, the macros on turkey bacon, much, much better than the macros on pig bacon. But that's because pig bacon tastes really good. Turkey bacon, not as much. Um, okay, so animal welfare organizations for years have been pushing for more humane treatment of farm animals but the California rules could be a rare case of consumers clearly paying a price for their beliefs. Say it isn't so. Say it isn't so that we're going to have a bacon supply issue. We just got through with lumber going through the roof, right? You can't get a lot of stuff for your home if you're doing a remodel because, yeah, we're backed up in supply. You can't get any new cars because of the microchip supply due to the Rona. You can't get any used cars because they're selling for a premium over said new cars because there's even fewer new cars on the lot because of the chip we just talked about. Now we're going to have to talk about price increases in bacon. Is bacon going to be one of the components within the 6% hike on Social Security, the Social Security Index, the cost of living adjustment? Senior citizens can't afford their bacon. They're going to need a larger cola. But with little time to build new facilities, inseminate sows, and inseminate sows. That just doesn't sound good saying that. But that is, I guess, what happens. You create more bacon things, small pigs, uh, and, and process the offspring by January. So unless you can build the new facilities, inseminate sows, and process the offspring by January, and these are ones that have more space and feel better about their life ending in pork product, it's hard to see how the pork industry can adequately supply California, which consumes roughly how, what percent of bacon or pork product do you think is consumed by the residents of California? 
everybody in the United States, what does California eat up pork wise? 15% California, you guys go ham on pork products. Mm. We're very concerned about the potential supply impacts and therefore cost increases, said Ms. Matt Sutton, the public director, uh, public policy director for the California Restaurant Association. So you got all kinds of dishes that rely on bacon. Why? Because bacon tastes good, high in fat, right? California's restaurants and groceries use about 255 million pounds of pork a month, but it farms only, its farms produce only 45 million pounds. So, um, yeah, percentage wise, Cali is importing all of their pork, right? This is according to Rabobank, a global food and agricultural financial services company. Rabobank. The National Pork Producers Council. Okay, I'm not making that up. This is a thing as well. Clearly, I am not um, from the whole farm agricultural perspective. In real estate terms, we do not have things such as the National Pork Producers Council, although that is sounds very important. And it's very and if you're into, you know, bacon, lettuce and tomato sandwiches, you care dearly about the National Pork Producers Council, who has asked the US Department of Agriculture for federal aid to help pay for retrofitting hog facilities around the nation to fill the gap. Hog farmers said they haven't complied because of the cost and because California hasn't yet issued formal regulations on how the new standards will be administered and enforced. So until they know, they're not going to just dump a bunch of money into retrofitting all their stuff so they can have a little more space for their pork things. Barry Goodwin, an economist at North Carolina State University, estimated the extra costs at 15% more per animal for a farm with a thousand breeding pigs. All right, so we've got 15% more cost to the wholesaler, the farm that has the breeding pigs. How much are they going to jack up the cost of bacon to make this go? Probably a lot. And then the end result to the consumer, how much is bacon going to go up? Probably sounds like a lot, right? If half the pork supply was suddenly lost in California, bacon prices would jump 60%, meaning a $6 package would rise to about $9.60. 10 bucks for a thing of bacon. Bacon's expensive. It is. You get one of those sides of bacon and then you make it all up and you pour all that grease out. You're supposed to pour it into a jar because you don't want to pour it down your plumbing because that grease will solidify and just make it brutal on sending other stuff down your your uh, plumbing lines. So don't don't dump the, the grease right in your system. That's That's not where you want it to go. You want it to go in the garbage. But when it's real hot after you've, you know, cooked up your bacon, It'll melt plastic so it could go right through your garbage can. I mean, I don't need to tell all you hardcore cooks out there how to do your bacon. But there's a lot of stuff involved with, you know, cooking up one of those packages of bacon. And then, and then my thing is that package of bacon was pretty heavy and it was pretty big in the fridge. You know, you know they're, they're good size. I don't know. What are they? 10 inches wide by six, eight inches tall by half an inch thick, something like that. But then when you get the cooked bacon into a little pile, it's really small. It's it's really sad. And it's really small. And you're like, I need a package another package of bacon, I need twice the amount of bacon ha I have here, because I just put a lot of effort into making said bacon. I, the end result I'm not happy with it's, it's it's not a it's not a production value. There's not enough bacon there. Two packs got to do two packs. All right. So if we, if the half the pork, so you lose 50% of the pork supply in Cali, bacon prices go up 60%, meaning a $6 package goes to nine sixty. dollars So according to a study by the Hatamiya Group, a consulting firm hired by opponents of the state proposition. Everybody just has their own hired gun now, don't they? What do you think? Eh, we don't really care about your opinion. What do you think? We like that opinion. Let's hire you. You can talk to these jokers over here who they don't value bacon. They don't value bacon at all. At one typical hog farm in Iowa, so sows are kept in open air crates measuring 14 square feet 
when they join a herd and then for a week as part of the insemination process before moving to larger, roughly 20 square foot group pens with other hogs. Both are less than 24 square feet required by the California law to give breeding pigs enough room to turn around and to extend their limbs. All right, when you put it this way, this sounds horrible, doesn't it? I don't really want to eat any more bacon. Ugh, bacon, another food item off the chart, right? Just sounds terrible. But this is the reality. And we all go into the grocery store. and We don't really think about it. Yeah, I'll take some bacon. Why wouldn't I taste delicious? Other operations keep sows in the crates nearly all of the times so they wouldn't be in compliance. Ugh, this is not good. This is not going in the right direction. I am seeing a dismal outlook for bacon. Maybe we should short bacon futures. I don't know. Can you do that? All right. Here's a here's a high line or a, a title I'm not going to read for you, but it's out there. IHOP, International House of Pancake, they debut the bacon obsession menu with bigger steakhouse style bacon. They know people want bigger bacon. The California Department, okay, we're on to the next relevant topic. California Department of Food and Agriculture said that al although the detailed regulations aren't finished, the key rules about space have been known for years. It's important to note that the law itself cannot be changed by regulations and the law has been in place since the farm animal confinement proposition, Proposition 12, passed by a wide margin in 2018. The agency said in response to questions from the Associated Press, pork industry has filed lawsuits, but so far courts have supported the California law. Of course they have. It's California. The National Pork Producers Council and a coalition of California restaurants and business groups have asked Governor Gavin Newsom, okay, there's their problem right there. They asked Governor Newsom something. They asked him to delay the new requirements. The council also is holding out hope that meat already in the supply chain could be sold, potentially delaying shortages. Okay, but when you get to the end of said, met, of said pork supply, you're going to have to re-up with more, more bacon, right? And so what are you going to do? We got to get to the bottom of this. We need to figure this out because, I mean, a world without bacon, is that a world you want to live in? I don't really think so. Okay, Let's, I lost my place here. Sometimes, you know, everything, you just lose everything and you got to go back and, all right. John, uh, Josh Balk, who leads animal farm protection efforts at the Humane Society of the United States, said the pork industry should accept the overwhelming view of Californians who want animals treated more humanely. I don't think most Californians think it through from farm to table, how it gets there. Do they really? They just think, ah, oh, don't make Porky Pig live in, live in pain. We, we want Porky Pig to be able to stretch out his limbs before we slaughter him and eat him for breakfast at Sam's whatever restaurant on Market Street, San Francisco. Why are pork producers constantly trying to overturn laws relating to cruelty to animals? But Balk asked. It says something about the pork industry. Those guys are just bastards, aren't they? Those people in the pork industry, I am liking them less and less as I read this. Nah, it's food supply. It's food chain. We've done things for a certain way for a long time. All right. Pigs have feelings too. We need to consider them. All right, let's give them an extra six feet moving space, move their limbs before we slaughter them. It says something about the pork industry when it seems its business operations is to lose at the ballot when they try to defend the practices. And then when animal cruelty laws are passed, they try to overturn them. Well, yeah, wouldn't you if your livelihood, you know, depended upon it? Let's be honest, we are talking about pigs here. In Iowa, which raises about one third of the nation's hogs, farmer Dwight Mogler estimates the changes would cost him 3 million bucks and allow room for 250 pigs in a space that now holds 300. Okay, so we're not talking about expanding that much space towards each pig, right? But it costs him 3 million bucks. How big is his operation? How big is his farm? Is 3 million bucks a lot for farmer Dwight Mogler? It's unknown. The details are not known at this point in the story. It's a developing situation. I'll get back to you. To afford the expense, Mogler said he needed to earn an extra 20 bucks per pig. And so far, processors are offering far less. Yeah, we know your pig's regulation, but oh, we don't play that game, right? The question to us is, if we do these changes, what is the next change going to be in the rules? Two years, three years, five years ahead, said Mogler pig farmer. 
The California rules also create a challenge for slaughterhouses, which now may send different cuts by a single hog to locations around the nation and to other countries. Processors will need to design new systems to track California compliant hogs and separate those premium cuts from standard pork that can serve the rest of the country. Is this a California compliant hog? I mean, that's literally what we're talking about, right? Okay, you can't eat that. You, 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 you can't take this to Cali, any other state, you're okay. No Cali, anywhere else, green light, go. California, don't stop. Kim, the San Francisco restaurant owner, said that she survived the pandemic by paring back her menu, driving hundreds of miles herself through the Bay Area to deliver food and reducing staff. Kim, who is Korean American, said she's especially worried for small restaurants whose customers can't afford big price increases and that specialize in Asian and Hispanic dishes that typically include, you got it, pork. You know, I work and I live with a lot of Asian and Hispanic populations in the city and their diet consists of pork. Pork is huge, Kim said. It's almost like bread and butter, staples of any solid diet. So, between pork, you got some protein, bread, you got the carbohydrate, butter, you've got fat. That's all you need. A bread and butter and pork sandwich. There you go. Okay, so now you know far more about the upcoming crisis in pork products that may hit California. What can we do about this? I don't really know. Uh, if you're living in California, maybe vote somewhere on something. Sounds like that's already happened though, right? Now we're just kind of in that regulation. All right. And so people are going to go to the store and they're going to see the price of bacon go through the effing roof and they're going to go, oh, whew, what happened there? And then they'll think back to proposition, what is it? 78, 41, 12, proposition 12. They're going to look at Proposition 12 and go, okay, well, this, is, this pork tastes better. It's from a ethically sourced animal, and I feel better about it. I feel better about my life. I'm paying a crap ton extra for my bacon, but I'm okay with that because Porky Pig, he lived a solid life before he was slaughtered and fed to said residents eating at Sam's whatever San Francisco restaurant, Sam's American Eatery. All right, there you go. Pigs, bacon, Sam's American Eatery. We've got it all right here in the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Just had to read this one. Enough of you guys sent this to me where we got to go with it. Not everything's about business or Antifa or rents or rent control or you know real estate. Oh, who wants to hear about real estate? Every now and then we got to throw one in. It's you know, bacon. It's a thing. Thanks so much for being here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay safe. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.